I never really like realized I was different as a kid um, until I hit like teenage years and then suddenly everyone's obsessed with how they look and you have to look a certain way and, and like fitting in is like the only important thing. In Freshers Week, saw all the different like looking around all the different clubs to join and I saw the climbing club and immediately thought to myself that sounds equal parts fun and dangerous I'm in. Climbing is just a sense of like community and belonging like it's the place where I feel most at home. Um, on average, how many people would you see in, a, in this climbing gym? So, the amount of people we normally would see in a climbing gym on average could be anywhere from a couple of hundred to three hundred. Yeah. Um, on busy times, I reckon you can get up to a hundred people in here, I reckon, like, depending on the areas that they're in. And how many of these people are para climbers? I have hardly seen any. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, not very, that very I've noticed before today. On average, one. <laughs> Um, yeah, Bella's the only one that springs to mind. Meet Isabella Walsh. Age 25, Isabella, or more commonly known by her teammates as Bella, is a paraclimber for Team GB. I used to sail for a few years, um, did a few competitions with that, but it wasn't really, like, I didn't feel like it was particularly going anywhere. Um, moved down to Southampton for uni to be nearer Weymouth and then took up climbing instead. I've won every like national series and competition basically since 2015. A friend from my uni climbing club said to me, oh, Bella, I've just heard of this thing called paraclimbing competitions. You should give them a go next year. And so I did and then accidentally ended up on the GB team. I've competed in three world championships and in Innsbruck 2018, I missed out on finals by one spot, which was, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe that. For many athletes, sport can be a way of expressing their abilities. For Isabella Walsh, climbing has allowed that to happen. She wanted to do everything herself, and I think that's helped her overcome quite a lot of uh, struggles and difficulties that she might have had with the uh, climbing and other things. When she was born, um, I, I noticed before the, uh, the nurse, or the midwife rather, and I thought, oh, she's got a hand awful funny. Because it looked like, you know, she's just got the little finger bumps. And then it sort of, the penny dropped. Uh, and I told the nurse, I pointed, her, pointed it out to the nurse, and she was absolutely brilliant with us. You know, if anybody ever said, well, you can't do that, that was the thing she wanted to do. So she, you know, she rode a bike, she played the violin, she was on netball teams and hockey teams and I don't think there was anything that she ever missed out on just because she only had one hand. Uh, she started climbing at school and then uh, she asked me one day to take her to a competition in Rochdale. I think it was about maybe nine or ten years ago. Uh, we drove over and she met this lovely lady called Audrey who helped her plan the routes by sort of folding her arm in so she, she was only using one arm and then climbing just two feet of one arm and Bella absolutely loved it. She met a lot of uh, people there and it kind of led on from that, um, you know, joining the British team and, and getting, making some contacts. It's just that feeling of pride when she, uh, you know, gets to the top or gets as far as she can. Like any competitive sports, when you're there and you're watching it live, it's really good, it's really exciting. And yeah, we hold our breath and climb with her 
in our heads anyway. Today is a very important day as part of Bella's training for the upcoming championships. Bella's travelled to the boardroom, a climbing centre in North Wales. Here Bella will be top rope climbing, a specific type of climbing that is used in the tournament format of a paraclimbing event. So there's bouldering which is shorter climbs, maybe like three or four metres high over crash mats with no ropes. And then there's root climbing, so that can be lead or top rope. You've got a rope tied onto you and you're either clipping it as you go up if it's lead or it's already attached from the top if you're on a top rope. I mostly prefer bouldering, um, but as our competitions are all on roots, I have been somewhat reluctantly getting myself to get more into climbing on ropes when I can. She'll be practicing rope climbing alongside her friend, Lucy. Climbing for me, like, is everything. Um, it's my motivation to get out of bed and it's a really good form of physio for me. It's been really helpful um, in terms of mental health and physical health. Uh, without climbing, I would be a lot weaker. Since climbing over the last year, I've kind of gained mobility back that I shouldn't have, so I can now use my legs a bit more, I can use my hands. Whereas before I was climbing, I couldn't do any of that stuff. So it's been, it's been nice to have, have that back. I never really see any other para climbers. Um, usually it's just me, unless I'm going with my like little para climbing squad of friends. Um, but even then we're the, kind of the only ones. Climbing has just been introduced into the sports world with it being added to the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games. Therefore, for paraclimbing to be in the Paralympics, there are certain achievements the sport must make, and not being in the biggest tournament for para-athletes can have an impact on the sport's representation. Obviously, having Bella around the centre, it, it definitely seems like it's underrepresented if we've only got one climber who I regularly see. In fact, she's the only one that springs to mind, full stop, so yeah. Climbing in general is definitely getting a lot more representation recently with it being in the Olympics this year, but paraclimbing is still, like, it's grown a lot even since I started competing. My first year on the team, I think there were eight of us and now we're 20 odd. To be fair, recently it has changed. There are more people that are, yeah, it's more, we're more open and more welcoming and yeah, society's changed, hasn't it? Paraclimbing is definitely underrepresented. It would be really nice to see myself when I go into a climbing centre um, and it would be nice to see more disabled people in this sport but it's 100% underrepresented. Both Lucy and Bella are trying to create more awareness for the sport in hopes that one day it will be in the Paralympic Games. I run uh, an inclusive paraclimbing club so I set up Leeds Paraclimbing Club to basically get more uh, disabled people into the sport. In order to do that I needed to do something so that led me um, to setting up the club and we've now been running like five weeks and over the five weeks we've had 25 new people um, start climbing or with disabilities. Bella often posts her training on her Instagram where for a five-time national champion only has 1,000 followers. Obviously very easy to spot and so someone will be like oh I know you from Instagram. I'm like oh. Hi. Like that's only happened to me a couple of times because my Instagram is not huge, but even a couple of times it's just weird like, for someone to be like, oh yeah, I recognise you. So we're starting to see a lot of smaller teams of like one or two climbers from countries who've, who'd previously never sent anyone out to paraclimbing comps. So that's, that's been nice to like, see the sport growing because obviously we need to hit a minimum number of countries competing before it can even be considered to go in the Paralympics. Occasionally we'll, we, we have had a few sort of sponsors as a team in the past that have meant that we've been supported to go out to a few competitions but there's been more that we've had to sort of fund ourselves to go out to which is 
not not so bad when we've got plenty of warning and then the competitions like a few days over in like France or Austria that you can we can do that on a budget pretty easily in fact you get very good at <laughs> booking the trips on a budget otherwise we just can't go out and compete okay so climbs are graded and you'll start like the very bottom with one and then they go all the way up to 9C plus now, which is basically impossible unless you're one specific person who set the route. Most indoor centers, the routes will start at about a three, maybe like a two plus, and go up to about 8A. To begin training, Bella will begin on a route grade of 6B. Later, Bella will attempt a route grade of 6C, a challenge Bella has come up against before. Bella begins the 6B climb. A common term in the climbing world is the word beta. Beta is an important concept that climbers must consider before assessing a climb. So beta is a sequence that each individual climber uses to get up a bouldering problem. So people are different heights, people have different styles and preferences of climbing, so they might use different holds. So uh, beta is the individual way a person gets up a problem. Everyone will do routes in a different way, like a tall person might reach past a certain hole, just go straight around it, a shorter person will have to do some like funky weird things just to get past a move that someone else found easy. Like I, I often joke that I get twice as much like climbing for my money because I'm tiny so everything's like twice as many moves. The journey for Bella to compete in is a tough process of qualifying for a tournament before she can even think about challenging for the title. Each championship has two qualifying routes and a finals route, so Bella must ensure she is well prepared for the upcoming tournament. She reaches the top of the route with ease, a good practice for what lies ahead. Bella is looking ahead to the World Championships later on this year. There she'll compete against other para climbers in what will be the toughest tournament of her career. Um, we've got the World Championships in Moscow in September, um, but I would like to make finals. So I've never made it into the finals at World Championships before, and I've been close once before, and it was like equal parts frustrating and like really cool. It's the first time that I'll have been to a competition in Moscow. It's just the fact that it's the World Championships and first one since 2019. Like there's a couple of World Cups this year, but not a lot of countries have been able to go to them. So like this will be my first competition since 2019. It's, a, it's just a really supportive sport. Everyone's always cheering everyone else on. Everyone wants everyone else to do well. Like whether you're climbing the easiest or the hardest routes in the wall, people will always be rooting for you. She's got the determination and the, uh, the ability to do it. And, you know, it's what she works the hardest at. I think, yes, we, we would have expected her to, to go as far as she has because she's got that sort of mentality. Yeah, to make it onto the podium in, in the World Championships would be incredible. Like, that would be such an amazing feeling. It's going to be really good to be back. It's going to be really good to just see everyone again. Um, and just making it through to the finals would be just like cherry on top. Now it's time for Bella to put her training to the test. She'll attempt the 6C Red, a 12 meter route where each move must be planned with detail and will challenge Bella in her battle to reach the top.
Isabella edges closer to the top, but begins to struggle further up the route. She tires quickly and struggles to find rhythm. She holds on, hoping to find any last bit of strength, but her body gives in and hurts herself in the process. I have a terrible habit of putting way too much pressure on myself. Like, it's never pressure from anyone else. It's purely pressure that I've put on myself, which I'm trying to sort of get out of the habit of doing that to an unhealthy level. Like obviously, a little bit of pressure on is good. Like, I want to do well. I want to, like, motivate myself to do well. But too much pressure is counterproductive. What about that, man? 2018 World Championships in Innsbruck. The first qualifier route, I'm still not entirely sure what happened, like if I got tangled in the twin ropes or if my brain just told me that to make me feel less bad for slipping where I did. Yes, Bella, come on, that's it, come on. Come on, Bella. Come on, I made it to about four moves from the top and if I'd have got either the top on that or about three or four moves further on the other one, that would have been enough points to have put me into the finals. Not that I still dwell on that at all. <laughs> but Bella doesn't give up and knows the hard work she puts in now will be worth it for the championships. Climbing is just a sense of community and belonging. Like it's the place where I feel most at home. Suddenly things that felt impossible are doable. <laughs>